Hey what up folks this is GK. So in this video we're going to look at the HashiCorp vault. So it's a secrets manager where you can maintain your secrets, your passwords and it's a much secure way of uh, you know communicating to any cloud without storing any credentials on your uh, disk. So vault is similar to your secrets manager in AWS uh, where you can store the secrets. You can store a static secret like you know you can create a password and you can store it in the vault or you can also create a dynamic secret like you can create a, a secret dynamic secret for gcp or aws or alibaba or any you know important uh, cloud service provider so what we are going to do in this video is we're going to install vault i'm going to show you how to install vault and then i'm going to show you how to configure vault with gcp and how to create a role set and also uh, as a demo i'll integrate vault with packer uh, as i was showing packer in previous video and then show how packer would use vault to talk to gcp and uh, you know create an image so that's uh, about this video so i'm going to use my local desktop where i have ubuntu on my windows so that way i can emulate like a data center to gcp sort of scenario and you can also use vault in your gcp one of the vm as well so first part of tutorial would be completely on my local so here i'm going to install vault so to install vault i highly recommend going uh, through the documentation they have a very good documentation for installation of vault and you know how to configure it so i'm going to paste this link in the description and so if you are trying to install vault on windows or linux you can click on this tab go to the section on the left to install vault and click on Linux or Windows wherever you want to install and for Ubuntu uh, you can do either Debian install or you can just download the package like you did for Terraform and if you don't know how to install Terraform you can again go back to my previous video on Terraform it's a very simple installation you download the file and you put it in the location like for example if you see here I have vault here installed uh, I mean it's an executable which is in this directory and I've put this to my path in the environment variable. So now if I do vault minus H, it should be able to identify that there's an executable in this path and then you would see all the you know commands and all. So this means that the vault is successfully installed on your on your computer. So make sure that after you install vault, after you have set the environment variable, do vault hyphen minus H or which vault to just see where the vault is getting identified. So that's the first step. So after vault is installed, the next step is you want to start the server. So for starting the server, this is a quick and dirty way of uh, starting the vault server. Uh, you can also use the deploy vault here that would actually show you how to install the vault GUI, which I did before but for this tutorial i'm not going to show you that uh, this tutorial is more about configuring vault with the packer and all uh, but feel free to go to the tab and try to install vault and configure ui and other stuff but for this tutorial i'm going to use a dev server which is not recommended for production so this will start the dev vault server and if you see here i got i got a root token and unseal key as if if the vault is sealed you can always unseal the vault and you can create the role sets and all to create a role set you need to unseal the vault and that that's what this key is for and the root token is the main token that is used for your clients to log in to the vault server and communicate with the vault server so once this is running um, you can either do no hub and you know start the server so that you can come out of this uh, this one and you know this shell and you can work in the same shell or you can just start here and open another new tab. Now, if you have to communicate to the server, you have to give two important environment variables. So that is vault address because your client has to know where your vault server is running. So that's what we're going to do here. And the next one is the vault token. This is the important thing because your client has to communicate with your uh, you know server and this is the authentication mechanism that it uses which is the token that we have generated 
that it automatically generated uh, when it started the vault server and this is the key here i'm going to copy that and paste it here and get the token right so now to copy this and paste it here just to make sure do echo dollar vault underscore addr okay and also do echo dollar vault underscore token perfect so these two are set in the environment variables now the client can communicate with this with the server so to check whether it is all running fine you can do vault status as you can see it is working fine so it is enabled and it is initialized sealed is false because you know we want to configure gcp we don't want to seal it now so now if you go back to the documentation so for this demo and we're going to use the dynamic secrets right so as you can see in this tutorial uh, it was uh, they were showing the dynamic secret with aws secrets engine but in our example we're going to use the gcp secrets engine and for that again uh, there is a different link uh, i'm going to paste this link as well here in the description so we're going to use this gcp secrets engine to communicate to our gcp project so for that we have to first uh, create a role set and uh, before we do that you know what we're going to do is we're going to tell vault that i'm going to enable gcp in my uh, server right so the command is vault secrets enable gcp okay. let me show it to you again so this is the command vault secrets enable gcp so this is going to enable the gcp secret engine and which we have done it before so now if i do vault secrets list you would see all the lists all the secrets that are enabled and uh, right now we have enabled the gcp and that's here all right now the next thing that we have to do is so we have to create a, a service account that vault can communicate with the gcp so basically the way it works is so vault uses this service account to talk to gcp basically this service account that we are going to create in the project will have all the necessary permissions for vault to communicate to the gcp and then vault will use that service account to either create a token uh, an oauth token or to create further service accounts that uh, you want to use so there are so a gcp supports two types of you know authentic credentials that it can generate so one is an oauth 2.0 to access token which is the preferred thing and i'm going to discuss with you what are the pros and cons of each one like uh, difference between oauth 2 access token versus uh, gcp service account keys so this is the preferred way because you can create unlimited tokens for a specific role set uh, for a service account as you all know there is a limitation with the service account uh, keys so if you create one service account you can create at max 10 service account keys in that uh, service account so that's the limitation we're going to use this method for this tutorial to use oauth to uh, access tokens to create the service account uh, we have to go to our gcp project i'm going to go to the gcp project and i'm going to use something that i haven't configured my vault with uh, for instance i'm going to use this one go to the service account section in the iam so you can just click on iam and you can also go to the service accounts from here so go to the service accounts and here create service account and call it as vault svc or something like that created by gk create this then for the permissions vault recommends at least to give these two permissions the service account admin and service account key admin but i'm going to give additional permissions which worked for me based on my research uh, through some medium articles but i'm going to share those articles as well uh, but uh, if you want this tutorial to work i would recommend to give these permissions but also feel free to try by only giving these two which is always the best way to do it 
So the first permission is security admin. Security admin. And the second permission is security reviewer. And then service account admin. And service account key admin. I think that's it. Uh, last one is service account uh, token creator. So this is to impersonate service accounts, create OAuth to to access tokens and uh, etc. All right, so continue, and then don't have to assign this to any user. So done. All right, so now you can see here we have the service account that got created, and if you want to check the permissions of this, copy the service account, go to IAM, and if you have too many other roles here or members here, just paste it here and you will see the permissions that are assigned to this uh, to this service account so before i download the key the other thing that i wanted to show you all is that you know you have to make sure you enable the iam google apis and cloud resources manager so go to the api section apis and services so once you come to the dashboard uh, click on the library and paste i am google apis and click on this one and click on enable also copy the cloud resource manager dot google apis dot com again go back to the library and paste this here All right so that's pretty much it but since we have created a service account we have to download the keys as well so i'm going to go back to iam here and then go to the service accounts and click on the vault service account that we have created and add a key to create a new key JSON. I'm going to open this. Uh, I do not see Notepad plus plus here, but anyways, I'm going to do with go with the Notepad and copy this key. Go back to your shell and copy that to my credentials dot JSON because that's what we used here. But if you don't want to do that, what we can do is you can rename this to vault svc.json or something, and then vi vault svc.json. Test it here. Perfect. So now save this, and we're going to run this next step. okay so that's done so the data is written to gcp config so now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to define the permissions that the role set is going to have so basically we have to create a role set so this role set will have the necessary permissions to perform the operations as an example let's say you want to use in packer so packer requires these two permissions uh, if you don't know again go back to my previous video but it requires admin v1 and account user so so this role set along uh, so this role set will have the project id the secret type which is access token because i'm not going to use uh, service account keys here 
so that's why it is access token and then the scope is uh, again cloud platform scope and the resource we have to give for this project if you are uh, if you have to do it for multiple projects then i would recommend to give the permission at a folder level or at an org level if you want to enable for many projects uh, instead of uh, creating multiple role sets and then in the roles you would define the actual permissions that you know you would use uh, for instance what will happen now is after i after i do this so when vault is trying to communicate vault will try to use this credential the vault svc json and then it will temporarily create a service account that it's going to use inside gcp and then it will generate the token so one good thing that you're going to see here is in my previous videos uh, i have like in my terraform videos or packer videos i created a lot of service accounts on the disk right so the disadvantage of this is that you know if this service account key is used by somebody else or it it was stolen so then your whole project is compromised because that account might have a lot of permissions that they can play around with your projects or uh, you know destroy your a uh, lot of resources and misuse them so vault is trying to avoid that by not creating any service accounts on the disk right and uh, by using by using the access token we're trying to avoid using service account keys so so before i run this command uh, one thing i wanted to change here is the projects because i have worked on this project before i have to change that project so go back to your google cloud project copy whole thing here from here and then paste it here copy this and paste it here anywhere else if you see the project reference then you have to make sure it is replaced properly yep that's it if you do not do this you will get uh, an issue because you know service account is associated with this project so you have to make sure of that and go back here and paste this okay so successfully the data is written to gcp role set now we have created my token role set and if you want to look at that you can do vault read gcp role set the same thing my token set and you will see here the bindings the project and the type of the secret and the email address that is associated with the project that it's going to use to authenticate and then the scope so at any point of time if you want to try with the gcp service account keys you know you can use this example that was well documented in the vault documentation i'm going to paste this link again in the description um, and you can use this to try another method instead of uh, the access token that's pretty much it now we have set all the permissions uh, we are good to go so to try it out what i would do is i would go to my packer scripts that i have and if i show you a sample example of packer.json so this is my packer json file and this is this is the this is what i have used before nothing is going to change much if you see the account file here i was using service account here right and the project id and all are going to remain same so in this example we're going to replace this with vault so basically packer is now going to use vault to create the access token and create an image so i already created a file uh, to save time and that is packer auth json so this is the file and this is what we're going to specify as G vault gcp auth engine auth engine instead of a service account so this is the only change that you would do in your packer configuration so for now for this demo i have to change the project uh, id as well because uh, i have to use where is that here okay so the project id is muted
save it now we're gonna try it out by doing packer so now we're gonna try it out by giving packer build packer auth json so if you have any issues or any service account permissions or anything you're going to see a lot of errors here but let's see what's going to happen okay so i got some other issue which is related to the network interfaces where uh, invalid user of the field network interface so that could be because on this project let me see what is the issue here nope, not here vpc network okay so i do not have a default network here so i think that's why it caused the issue so all i had to do was i have to I had to add uh, network my network because if you do not add that it will take the default network let me run it again right now you can see that i'm not getting that error again so packer build packer auth json so if i go back to the project and if i go to the compute engine you will see that packer is packer will try to create a vm which is which it already created and then you know it's going to create a image and it's all going to work fine now if i have to give you further information on um, access keys versus service account keys so these are the advantages and disadvantages of each each of them the advantage of access keys is you can generate infinite number of tokens as i have discussed before per role set so the disadvantage of access tokens is it cannot be used with some client libraries or tools because some client libraries by default you know use only service accounts so it might not work there and it also has a static life of one hour that cannot be modified or revoked or extended okay so this is once you generate a token in gcp using the service account it will last only for one hour so that's another disadvantage if you have a long running stuff or anything then it might not be a good idea to use you know the access token and the, uh, the service account keys advantages are controllable lifetime through vault uh, allowing for longer access and can be used by all normal gcp tooling pretty much any other tools which are try trying to talk to gcp use service account keys so the disadvantage are infinite lifetime in gcp if there are not if they are not managed properly leaked keys can live long live forever so this is uh, the management of the keys is difficult and it is limited to 10 per role set service account so that's another disadvantage so as much as you can try to use only access tokens but if you cannot use that then try to use service account keys that's my recommendation all right so now let's go back to the console and uh, we see that the artifacts are built successfully and we have got the new image so that's pretty much it for the demo so i hope you have learned something in this video and uh, please feel free to try out different things like create a vault ui or uh, you know create a service account keys type of uh, vault secrets and play around with this and and i hope this was super helpful for you all if you like this video give it a like and share it with your friends and please do click on the subscribe button thank you so much for watching